Hi everybody, in this next video I'm going to go through configuration of the energy dashboard in Home Assistant so you can now see the live data from your um, Solax installation reflected in your Home Assistant interface. Um, so yeah, this is uh, really an exciting bit because it actually you know connects the two and shows you a graphical representation of, of what's actually going on. Along the way for the future, if you can learn a little bit about uh, the different sensors or entities they're called in, in uh, Home Assistant, um, that's a great thing. So for configuration of the energy dashboard, um, we're looking at the Solax grid sensors, so that's grid import and grid export. The PV sensors, so that's to do with the um, panels, so there'll be different ones for the each MPP T tracker and uh, also combined sensors for uh, total production. Uh, we'll also be looking at the uh, battery storage sensors, so that's battery input and uh, battery output for charging and discharging the battery. And um, if you're following along with the uh, Octopus Energy, then um, it'll also tie in with the import and export rate sensors so that Home Assistant can calculate how much money you're saving or spending <clears throat> on your import and export energy. Okay, log on to your Home Assistant instance and um, just go to settings and we're going to configure the energy dashboard. So click on dashboards here in settings and then click on the word uh, energy there to open the energy dashboard configuration page. So the main areas that we're going to configure today are the grid electricity, the solar panels section and the home battery storage. I'm not going to go through gas or water consumption or individual devices. To start with, we're going to add a consumption and this is for import energy. So click add consumption and then the name of the sensor, the Solax sensor for your import energy is called Solax Today's Import Energy. So click save there. And then you're going to add a return to the grid. So this is an export sensor. And then the export sensor name is Solax Today's Export Energy. And you can pick that from the list. Onto the solar configuration section, um, add a solar production. And the uh, sensor name for Solax's solar energy is Today's Solar Energy. And choose that from the list and then Oh, there is an option here if you want to forecast solar energy and what it does is uh, look at the weather forecast and your current energy production, your size of your array and it tries to predict what kind of um, output you'll have tomorrow. Um, it can be useful, it is an estimate, I'm not going to go to configure it now but you're welcome to experiment with that if you want to. So click save and we'll move on to the home battery storage. So click add battery system in there and the uh, sensors for the battery storage, the output, um, Solax battery output energy today and the input sensor is Solax battery input energy today and then click the save button. As you can see on this screen, it says after setting up new device, it can take up to two hours for new data to arrive in your energy dashboard. And um, so don't be disappointed now if there's nothing there, it will now, it'll accumulate over time and you'll be able to see historical graphs um, in the near future. If you want to uh, check that configuration, click on the energy dashboard and it should look something like this. And uh, you can see that you've got the energy flow at the side and we've got uh, some graphs that'll be underneath, but there's no data in there yet. And uh, you're gonna have to wait a couple of hours uh, information to start appearing. So I've brought an example of uh, my energy dashboard here, which has some data in it. And what the energy dashboard is really good for is showing um, historical data. It's not a live update, okay? It's always an hour or two out of date, but the historical data is fantastic. So at the top here on the right hand side, you can see that uh, we've got a date selection and you can scroll back through different days of the week and um, you can also set a, a time period so if you'd like to see by the week and this is each day of the week um, or by the month or even by the year you can um, see all those things just by clicking on the date selector at the top so for example if I wanted to see how much solar energy I've generated this week I can click on week and here in the energy flow you can see it says 177 kilowatt hours has been generated for the week. If I want to see just today I can click the day and it'll say I've generated 10.2 kilowatt hours today. You scroll through the days 
and yesterday I generated 51.6 kilowatt hours. For the whole month, 961, and um, all the other figures are updated as well. So I've exported 715 to the grid, imported only one, and the same for the battery and the house load. The house has consumed 229 kilowatt hours. Um, so it's really useful for that. The breakdown of the charts uh, is also very good. You can see how much consumed solar you've had, uh, the export energy today, the import energy today, and any solar energy that the battery has consumed or has come from the battery as well. Um, scrolling down, it shows a graph of just the solar output. So this is a PV production every hour for yesterday. And you can see the, the, the shape of the bell curve that it makes. This also changes so you can see it every day for a week or every day for a month. So it's a little bit like the cloud app, but it separates the information out in a better way, give you more control over it. And then uh, scrolling further down, it shows the summaries in a table form, the savings and how much money you could make from your solar installation. Okay, the net return to the grid is the import energy um, taken away from the export energy. And the self-consumed solar energy is how much of the energy that you generate from your panels you're actually consuming um, with your house load. Most of mine's exported to the grid, so I'm only at 25%. For those of you who are out there who are looking for the live Octopus Energy readings, this is to do with adding the uh, rates of import and export, so that's the pence per kilowatt hour, to the energy dashboard so it can track the costs. Now these sensors have complicated names. Uh, they'll start sensor.octopus energy electricity, and then you'll have your meter number and your import MPAN followed by current rate. And the export sensor will have the meter number followed by the export MPAN followed by export current rate. Um, back in Home Assistant, I'm going to go and edit the energy dashboard. So we'll go to settings and then into dashboards, click on energy and you'll see that familiar configuration page. So to add the octopus sensors, first add the import energy sensor. So go to the Solax Today's Import Energy and then there's a little pencil icon there. Click on the pencil to edit the settings and select use an entity with the current price here. And from the drop down here, you're going to select the Octopus Energy Sensor that uh, you saw in the previous slide. When you finish that, click Save and do exactly the same for the Export Energy Sensor. Click the pencil icon to edit the settings. Click Use an entity with the current rate. And from the drop down here, select the Octopus Energy Sensor for your meter and MPAN, um, which was uh, described on the previous slide, and click Save. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe and share. And I'll see you in the next video where we'll be discussing the setup and configuration of the live Energy Flow card.